Thank you all to be here. It's really nice to see very uh, well-known faces, some of the ones that I have to start uh, the journey uh, together, and some of them that I have met in the middle of my path, and some of them that have helped me in this moment. It's not easy, as Daniel said. Uh, but so thank you very much, and I hope we can keep in touch. And actually, the ones that I just met here, I hope we can start this relationship and in my next sequel of my, my life. But now I have to finish this one, right? So I ask you, do you know what a dreadful tsunami is? I remember when I first saw the image of a tsunami on TV. Uh, it was impressive. I was shocked. Actually, there is a better word to describe wha what I was feeling at this moment. I was terrified. And I wanted to know why does it happen. And I found out that a tsunami, it's a combination of factors. Different from what I thought at the beginning that was only a huge and big wave, it was several elements that only together can make a huge and big and terrible tsunami. So when I was preparing myself to finish my, this cycle of my life, I realized that the tsunami was the best metaphor to start my thesis presentation. Because if I ask you my question, can data pay the bill? Probably the answer here would be no. And you're right, because raw data cannot pay the bill, as well as none of those factors alone can cause a terrible tsunami. But what I found on my research is that, yes, there is a possibility if you have a combination of factors and you come up uh, and, and you uh, find uh, what I call creative data. If you apply creative data, yes, it's possible. And how do I describe this concept that became the most important concept of my, um, my thesis here? Uh, creative data is um, contextualized data that can generate knowledge able to support business decisions and or to create emotional connection with consumers that's going to be able to uh, boost communication, boost innovation, and also to boost revenues. So creative data is not the raw data. It's a combination, like a tsunami. It's a result of data analysis and insights put into actions for creative matters. But how did I arrive to this point that is the most important concept of my thesis. So first, it's important to understand what is behind my generic questions. Can data pay the bill? And I tell you, this is not about money. My scientific question behind is, what is the data value creation in the media and advertising industry based on the, the concept of value creation and value capture from Verdun? So I think most of you have heard about Verdun. And, but I'm going to repeat. Uh, so according to Verdun, uh, the company need to create value for their customers and their clients, and they need to be able to monetize on it. So along with this um, concept of value creation and value capture, it's important to understand the relationship between data and creative industry. This is not a new relationship. According to Sandra Hills, this relationship happened since the 40s, at the beginning of the mass media era, where uh, the media companies introduced to the market ratings, ratings and GRPs, in other words, data, to help them to track eyeballs and to sell those eyeballs to their clients. So this business model, based on results, it worked fit very well for a lot of uh, ages and, and years in the creative industry. However, with the uh, media fragmentation and the, um, uh, where the uh, media consumption became much more complex, and also with the big data, where now people, they can not only see the results of the eyeballs, but the implications of those eyeballs in the real consumption, uh, this traditional and where established business model just disrupted. As mentioned Daniel before, and I'm going to pass very quickly to this because he explained a lot about uh, disruption, we are facing the fourth industrial revolution according to the World Economic Forum. And all these technologies, advantages, and as AI or big data, 
they have impacted already humans' behaviors, humans' consumptions, and also industries and jobs. So the advertising media, uh, media industry has already been impacted by this fourth industrial revolution. According to the Bob uh, Garfield, the traditional business model, traditional advertising, cannot sustain the media business anymore. However, the, uh, the industry doesn't know how to replace this old business model. But if on one hand, we, uh, we have some disruption, uh, disruption in some industries, on another hand, there is a new and very powerful industry that just emerged, data. According to The Economist, data is the new oil. But not everyone agrees with this statement. Uh, but what everyone agrees is that data has become one of the most important and, and powerful industry uh, in this uh, world, and this has already impacted the creative industry. So based on the data value creation, with the understand the situation of data and um, uh, the um, uh, in the creative industry, I did my research. And what I was looking for, so first I want to know if companies, media companies, uh, advertising companies, or techie companies, if they are using data. So this was the first part that I want to know. Second, if they are using data, what kind of data and in what part of the process they are using those data. Also, if they are using this data, how they are contributing with them. And finally, how the um, uh, executive who deal with this data pro uh, project looks like and how they are. So I did my research and I used case studies as a methodology because according to stake, case studies is the best and ideal methodology to analyze complex and subjective realities as well as uh, real life situations. And I pick it four categories to be analyzed. So the first category, I studied a traditional media company. So I studied um, uh, data, uh, discovery data science, that is a data department into discovery networks, one of the biggest uh, media companies in the world, to understand how the, they are using data to help executives to have a better decisions to help creative executives to have a better outcomes in creative development and content development, and how they are using data to help uh, add sales to, um, ele to leverage their value among discovery clients. Also, I picked a well-established startup called Movil. Movil is a Brazilian startup that is going to become the next unicorn, and they, ne they needed to reinvent themselves in the smartphone era. Uh, and they use a uh, data-driven culture to try to um, find what would be the, the good and the best uh, hit for their company. And they launch uh, PlayKids, that it's a video platform for kids, similar to Netflix, and that became the number one digital platform for kids in Latin America in one of the biggest uh, kid, uh, digital platform for kids around the world, including markets as chi China and US. The number three and the number four case studies are about data monetization tryout. So I picked a tech startup called Formilk that originally they want to rely their business in raw data, but they failed. And now they have to invent, uh, reinvent their selves and th they are becoming a social media for agribusiness. And the last case study, I studied how big agencies, they are using uh, data tools, data methodology, and data systems to leverage their value among their clients. So uh, with all those um, case studies, I, could, I found 15 takeaways. Some takeaways related to business that helped me to create a framework and a roadmap and some takeaways related to leadership that helped me to uh, start a discussion about creative data leadership. And I can tell you, based on the results, that the data value creation is already understood among creative uh, industry and among 
uh, creative organizations. They, the companies have already uh, realized the potential of the data, but they are still trying and testing how to best um, transform data into knowledge and how to better monetize on it. The good news is there is a lot of potentials and opportunities of monetization. I could found successful stories related to the use of data for optimized investments, for to uh, boost innovation, also for to help companies to leverage their value among their clients, and also to help uh, business executives to take better decisions in the creative business. But I've, I found very few initiatives related to the use of data to create uh, content and develop uh, creative solutions. The reasons for this are first, because there is still a technological limitation for uh, the use of the kind of data that is needed for this technological and, and creative service. That is what is called unstructured data. So uh, the second point is there is still a barrier from the creative uh, minds and creative executives and talents to use data because or because they don't know how to understand the data so they cannot recognize the benefits but also the limitations of the data or because they still see data as an enemy or because they rely too much on data. So the outcomes that they get from the numbers are not uh, enough to have a good creative solution or uh, develop a good um, content. But I found one more takeaway that it was in each one of the four case studies that I did. That is, the rise of the data came after a critical moment. And I want to share here what exactly is a critical moment and it's basic, the company you to die. It's basic this, the, the critical moments where I found uh, those case studies. So it means that combine and integrate data and creative service in advance can help creative organizations to rethink about their, mod their business model, to uh, understand better how does it works, and to uh, be able to reshape them in a way that's going to be less damage for their, uh, um, their business. So what are the implications? I have 10 takeaways, 10 business takeaways that I found uh, based on the studies that helped me to uh, create a um, uh, framework and also to create a, a roadmap. The framework can help to recognize the value of the data and to optimize the use of the data. As a tsunami, again, it's a combination of factors. In one side, what kind, uh, what kind of data do you have? And on another side, what do you want this data for? So in the data in the in creative organizations, all the data come from humans. But it can come from what people have done. For example, what kind of TV show they have seen on TV, what kind of um, uh, app they have downloaded on their uh, mobile phone, or what kind of search they have done on the internet. But also, the data can come from what is the people behavior, what is the people um, perceptions. Also, in the creative industry, there is two main objectives why companies are using data. Or they want to use data because they want to develop a product or a service, or they, use, they want to use data to engage and reach uh, people. So to make it clear, this is the framework. And depend on the combination of the factors here, data can be placed in the four different quadrants. So if the company wants to develop a product and they know what the, 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 problem, the problem is, so they can rely on human habits or what people have done. And they can, and the data that they need here is what I classified as uh, optimization data. The good example of our optimization data is when you have a new show and you want to launch it, but you don't know if it's better to launch mobile first or to launch it on TV, VOD, or social media. So you rely on ratings, downloads, um, retention, subscribing numbers to identify what would be the best strategy for to launch the show. So 
Here, the optimization data, they rely in a kind of data that it's called structured data. So structured data, they, they, need a low, they have a low need for contextualization, and because of this, they can easily automate it. Uh, optimization data existed before, before the big data, but before it, it was done manually and with, limit, uh, with a limitation of sample. With the big data and a more robust sample, uh, the optimization data uh, outcomes and the optimization data insights, they are m much better and much broader. So a kind of decisions that the company can take is um, a much better decisions now. But if the company doesn't want to develop a product, they want to reach people. They want to reach the right person. So the kind of data that they need here is what I call performance data. And the best example of performance data is programmatic media buying, where companies rely on ratings or data visualization or uh, videos visualizations or uh, media consumption or uh, and cross with online search or online buying to get what should be the best target and the most efficient media. So here also, the performance data relied on its, uh, the kind of data that is structured data that need low, that has low need of contextualization and for consequence, and as a result, it's easily, it's, it's, there is a easy way, um, it's easy to be automated. And in this case, human can be replaced. This uh, performance data was one of the main reasons for the disruption of media uh, that we are facing now. But it also helps companies to have a better optimization of their um, media investments. And also companies are using performance data to try new hypotheses. But from now, everything that we have seen, it's about results. It's they use data as informative data. They use data just to see what are the results, the performance, and how they can optimize. But if the company really needs to develop something that they don't know what it is, they want to develop a new product that they, know, they don't know, they need to go beyond. If they need a solution, a creative solution, they need to go beyond. And in this case, they need to rely on human behaviors, what people have think, and what is the behind the data, what is the whys, what is the perceptions, first impressions, and emotionals. So if the company want to develop a product and they don't know what it is, they need to rely on human um, behaviors to understand what is going to be the motivation for them. And in this case, the good example is when you want to develop a website and an interface, and you want that this interface is a friendly interface. So you need to validate the, w the website and the interface with consumers by using UX research, uh, social media, qualitative, or other kinds of tools that can give you, that can help you to understand the behinds. But if the company doesn't want to develop a product, but they want to engage people, so in this case, the kind of data requested here is what I called emotional data. Emotional data also is based on um, unstructured data, and as well as the cognitive data, they need high level of contextualization, and they need humans to interpret the data. Emotional data, a good example is if a company wants to develop a product or a, an ad, or to use it to a personality-based data, a marketing, and they can use unstructured data such as um, psychological big data, or NPL, to um, try to understand the emotions behind the numbers. So in the emotional data, it's key to translate numbers into insights. And because of this, emotional data has become the most powerful data in the creative industry, because it has the power to inspire people and to influence people as well. Today, it's still limit, uh, the, the read of emotional data has some limitations because, uh, because of technical limitations, but I believe that AI and machine learning and the possibility to read a voice, for example, from Alexa, 
it was going to help the, the industry, the creative industry, to better understand the emotion behind the data and to, to have better outcomes in emotional data. Emotional data is the most valued data here, and as, as a consequence, it's also with, with the one that have the most potential of monetization. But there is one more, another point here that is important to emphasize about emotional data. Since it has the power to influence people, to inspire people, it also can manipulate people. So here, emotional data needs a high level of responsibility from, it, from each one of me, us that is going to use the data for creative matters in the future, emotional data. But as I mentioned before, this is not the only outcome that I got from the research. I also got, a, uh, I could develop a roadmap based on the 10 takeaways. Although I found 10 takeaways, I uh, identified that two of them could be combined in another, so I created a roadmap in, 80s, in 80 steps, uh, from beginning to the end. So a roadmap is um, it's a tool or an instrument that can help people or companies to achieve something in a logical way. So they know that they have to start with the step number one, and to finish the step uh, until the last step, in this case, the step number eight, to get something. In this specific framework, the, uh, the whole roadmap, the outcome is this roadmap can help companies to implement a data-driven culture in the creative industry and to better optimize the use of their data. Uh, due to the time, I'm not going for these 80 steps, but I'd like to emphasize two of them. The step number three, build a data-driven culture, prototype first and learn quickly. Different from the common sense, a data-driven culture can boost creativity and also help to um, uh, innovate. Um, because since you have more freedom to test, you also have more freedom to create. Then step number, uh, the other step that I want to emphasize is the step number six. The innovation will not come through algorithms. That sounds a paradox with the step number three that I just mentioned here, but it's not. Because rely on data doesn't mean to eliminate human brains. Algorithms can help you and you help the creative industry to really uh, understand the correlation between variables that you'd be never imagined before if you do not have uh, algorithms. But only human brains and talents can understand why this connection happens. And mainly, why do you need to know about these connections and how you're going to put this in practice in a business? So it's not only about to recognize the data and the results, but it's better is also about to understand the behinds and what is going to be useful for the business. Um, a roadmap can also help the creative leader because data has impacted not only people who deal with data in the data process, but also uh, all the creative leaders. So the creative leaders need to be open mind for new ways of monetization but also it have to be aware that data-driven needs investments and also courage. And what I mean about data-driven here, it's important to, to tell you, is not about uh, dashboards, it's not about data assistants or data warehouse. It's about talent. In the creative industry, a uh, creative leader to uh, need to embrace people to understand the benefits and the limitations of data and to be able to use the data. So embrace people in the, in the uh, creative uh, environment to be able to read and understand those data. This is the real mean of uh, data-driven culture in creative industry. They are going to use the, the dashboards. They are going to use uh, the, the data framework and definitely they're going to use the data wa waterhouse, but if they don't know how to use it, you're not going to implement a data-driven culture. So until now, we have the data leader, and the creative leader, and the data executives who deal with data. But what I propose here is that there is now a new important position 
that is the creative data leader, since the data became much more strategic and close to the business and the governance of the organization. So the creative data uh, leader needs to overcome cultural barriers and spread the value of analytics to all uh, levels of the organization. It means the interns to the stakeholders. Also, they need to be aware that gut feelings is still very important in this creative industry. And as I mentioned before, uh, the data driven can help to promote uh, this freedom to create. Uh, but for this, the data leader, they need some skills. And one of them is to deliver data storytelling because the creatives might be not very into data. But one thing that the creative industry know how to do is to tell stories. So why not to tell stories rely on data? Tell them the story about the data. So once again, my question, can data pay the bill? But now, after everything that we have uh, go in this moment, the answer is depends. Depend of a combination of factors. So, but yes, there is possibilities. If you, for example, analyze the data and have some insights, if you have uh, the combination of algorithms and humans, or if you use data to test hypotheses not to avoid mistake, yes, it can pay the bill. And it can help the company to leverage their value among their clients and also to create a more powerful uh, creative uh, piece uh, and content to embrace people, to be engaged with them. So I believe that this thesis helped to bring some abstracted question about data. What is data? What is data about? I'm going to die. This kind of things in a very concrete and, um, and real life situation. But there is some limitations for this thesis. So I think it's important to mention that due to the limit of time, and six months, right? Seven months. Uh, and also to the limitation of the access to information for other markets in other industry, some of the questions that I believe is important to have here could not be answered in this study. So one of them is about privacy. And I'm not worried about um, regulations because it's going to come yes or yes. So be prepared for regulations. Uh, Everyone is going to be impacted for privacy regulations as well as creative industry. So, but what I'm worried about here is what we're going to do with this data. What is going to be the outcomes in the creative industry with the data that we're going to have access. This for me is the most important and what is going to impact the personal data uh, relationship. It should be studied as well in a political and sociological field uh, since it also has become an ethical issue and has boosted the responsibility of the creative leader. Because as water, it can be a hydraulic power, but also can be a terrible tsunami for the society. Thank you. <laughs>